Hello and welcome to the Musicity School of Sound Art. I am your host Robin the Fog and this is the third in a series of short videos exploring the relationship between sound and space, architecture and environment. We've been blessed with a beautiful fresh spring morning today in South London, which of course provides the most admirable conditions for hiding away in a cold dark studio. Welcome to my central base of operations and do please forgive the mess. Joining me on this occasion is the inimitable Robbie Judkins, better known as the musician and sound artist Left Hand Cuts Off the Right. Today we're going to attempt to produce a new work created entirely from HowlRound, or as it's more commonly known, Feedback. Let the games begin. <laughs> It's unlikely that many of you will need much of an introduction, as you will have encountered feedback already. The most familiar example, and generally the most unpleasant, is when a microphone and a loudspeaker are placed closely together, usually by accident, creating an exponentially growing loop, a sudden massive increase in volume, and quite possibly some hearing damage too. But of course, this is the extreme end of the spectrum. When controlled and handled delicately, it can be morphed and sculpted into something really quite beautiful. First emerging with the development of amplified music, particularly rock and roll, there's a creditable theory that the phenomenon of feedback first entered the public consciousness in the opening seconds of the Beatles song, I Feel Fine. But that's not really our story. For our own more specialist purposes, feedback has been an integral part of experimental music from the earliest days of amplified sound, and it's hard to think of any artist of the last few decades that hasn't incorporated it into their practice. One of the earliest and most significant examples is Robert Ashley's astonishing 1964 work The Wolfman, which is 18 solid minutes of blistering noise that anticipates contemporary extreme musics by several decades. An absolute thrill, but not for the faint-hearted. Some of my other favourite works include those by David Lee Meyer's Arcane Device Project, Alvin Lussier, David Tudor, Pauline Oliveros, and of course the sublime minimalist works of Eliane Radigue. The list just keeps on growing. As mentioned a moment ago, feedback in its most basic form can be conjured simply by holding a microphone close to a loudspeaker. This was the original inspiration for Steve Reich's 1968 composition Pendulum Music, in which four microphones were swung above a quartet of speakers to create shifting melodies and rhythms that change over time as the momentum of the pendulums gradually subside. The results sound fantastic, but are obviously quite difficult for us to replicate with a single mic on a short cable in a cramped railway arch. Still, while this particular microphone doesn't really lend itself to being swung, despite our best efforts, moving it forwards and backwards and around over the machine's built-in speaker should still create some interesting varieties in tone and pitch. We've also inserted a small piece of card to blot out the tape machine's erase head. This means that in theory, nothing on the tape will ever be erased and we should be able to build up multiple layers. But as you can imagine, this can prove to be a rather inexact science. After all, sticking foreign objects into elderly machines seldom does them much good, but hopefully Delia can take it. One foreign object that is useful when working with loops is a sturdy pencil, which Robbie is using here to keep the tape running smoothly over the playheads and hopefully preventing any jamming. While building up these layers, we can also add variety by adjusting the machine's playback speed. It's a useful fact when working with tape that halving or doubling the speed in this way changes the sound by one octave. This machine happens to have four different speeds, so in theory we can build up a number of differing tones and pitches that should still remain in tune with one another. Obviously I'm using words like should, in and tune with the usual pinch of salt. Having built up a few layers playing at different speeds in this way, let's add our second form of feedback by taking these sounds and feeding them through the larger machine, Wendy the Revox. Here we're sending the machine all the sounds coming from our tape loop, plus a little bit of itself folded back into the mix. With a little creative use of equalization via the mixing desk, some interesting and often dramatic results can occur. Fifteen minutes later and the results are ready for playback. 
For added intrigue, I've invited the artist James Alec Hardy down from his studio space upstairs in order to provide us with a third form of feedback, video. Here's what we came up with. And there we have it. Not bad for sounds created and manipulated on the spot in just under half an hour with a microphone, two machines and a pencil. I always love how tape injects a little unpredictability into the mix. You never can tell what you're going to get and as sound artists it's always good to be kept on our toes. Why not try something similar for yourself? Even if you're in the unfortunate position of not having a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder or a railway arch at your disposal, in the modern world, devices with microphones and loudspeakers built into them are everywhere. I've seen interesting results achieved using mobile phones, children's walkie-talkies, and even hearing aids, though that last one actually proved rather unfortunate for the person wearing it. The creative possibilities are endless, but always remember that feedback can get out of control very quickly, so it's best to exercise caution and avoid any experiments conducted at excessive volume or with delicate equipment. And by delicate equipment, I'm mostly referring to your ears. My advice would be to avoid headphones, use small speakers and keep the volume low at least initially, until you get a proper feel for the creative and destructive potential of your equipment, the thickness of your walls and the sensitivities of your neighbours. In the meantime, my thanks go out to Robbie and to James for being huge fun to work with. You can check out some of their works at lefthandcutsofftheright.bandcamp.com and jamesalechardy.com respectively. Should you require further inspiration, the feedback works of David Lee Myers, Eliane Radig, Steve Reich, Pauline Oliveros and so on can all be readily sourced online. And as ever, there's a huge wealth of sonic intrigue to explore over at musicity.space. I've been Robin the Fog, keep your ears peeled and I'll see you next time for another audio adventure.